Look at how dirty I did this boy, Julio. Look at this. I got five kings on him, and now he's demanding a rematch. Look how many times this poor bastard said, yeah, I want a rematch. You ain't getting no damn rematch, fool. Look at this guy. He's a 1705. He's probably a fake. And I just I just put this guy here. He has to move that other, and he's going to lose his rook because I snatched his queen from him. He doesn't know what to do. So the time is ticking. 55, 53, 52. Oh, poor guy. Look at this. Look at this. Man, I don't know what these turkeys thought. He, he, see, and then he's making me wait. He's stalling the game because he knows he lost. Ah, he lost. Stupid. All right, look at this Brazilian. I had to take him down. Look at this. Uh, as you can see, he had my king trapped in there. He got my queen, and then he moved in for the kill with the queen. Watch this. And now, watch this. That's it. Got him. Got him right there. He resigned. <laughs> right, right. That's some bullshit. I'll say that the worst thing that could have ever happened to modern women was YouTube and the manosphere in its varying forms, whether you're talking about the white manosphere or the black manosphere. And then add to that the quarantine because of the pandemic in 2020. Because for the first time, men were sitting at home at their computers with nothing to do. Even women were sitting at home with their computers with nothing to do. And men had a chance to actually think about the raw deal that they're getting from modern women. Specifically, there was a news article published that was talking about how women were using men for food dates. They were going out with men. They were getting wined and dined and then not giving them anything in return, uh, specifically not giving them any sexual gratification. Or... They were using multiple men and doing the exact same thing, basically playing these dudes. These dudes are out there taking them on these uh, 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 vacations, taking them on uh, restaurants, trips and this, that and other, taking them back and forth to restaurants. And the women are posting photos on their Instagram and their Twitter feeds and everything of the food. And they leave the guy out. They don't even show who the guy is. And if another guy asked them about who were you with, they'll just lie and say, oh, yeah, well, I was with a girlfriend and this, that and other. And all the while, they're keeping like throngs of men and using them one by one. Or there are some women who use men for other reasons. Some women use men to take them out shopping. And these guys are thinking that they're going to get something. Um, I believe uh, Alan Roger Curry, Arthur, he made a book called The um, Promise of Sex. I think it's called The Promise of Sex. I could be wrong. But basically, he was basically saying, yeah, these women are using men and giving them just the probability or the possibility of them having sexual gratification as a way to keep the men on the hook. It's like the carrot on the stick that you keep in front of the donkey to keep the donkey moving in the same direction. And the sad thing about it is, during the pandemic, men had a chance to actually sit back and listen to other men express their anger and their frustration and whatnot. And now there is a common language and a common rhetoric among men when talking about women in general. Now, women have always had that common language and common rhetoric. That's what daytime talk television was built on, whether you go back to like Oprah or um, any of those shows. I can't remember most of those people, but Oprah stands out. Oprah being the queen of daytime talk forever. Like, there will probably never be anybody who beats Oprah at daytime talk. I think the only thing that even comes close is probably The View which has been imitated by these other shows like The Talk and The Real and all this other nonsense. But the reality is men now have a common language and men now have a common rhetoric when talking about women. So where is that taking us? It's created what they call right now the black manosphere or the white manosphere. There's a bunch of manospheres basically. Anybody can have a manosphere. 
So what does all this mean? What it means is that men are now able to verbally express themselves. Now, unfortunately, what this means is that you've got a lot of guys who really aren't well-versed in statistics, and you have a lot of dudes who aren't well-versed in even the English language. And what they try to do is they try to repeat talking points, regardless where they come from. Like, for instance, if I told you that I have a stat that I can show you that says 58% of women hold the majority of student loan debt, which you can easily look up. The issue is now we all end up talking in rhetoric and we end up talking in all these statistics that we're basically pulling out our ass. Even if you can point to the internet and you can say, this is my source, the US.gov or F fed.gov or whatever, the CDC, even if you can pull these stats out and use them as a weapon, you've weaponized statistics, even if you can do that, the reality is you had no responsibility and you had no hand in actually making these stats up. You didn't go out there and do a survey. You didn't go out there and do any of the work related, but this is what it's come to. It's a gender war. I've always said war, and once you understand what Darwinism and survival of the fittest is all about, once you understand that, you can understand war. War means basically we are right. W-A-R. We are right. So what you're basically doing is you're putting two competing ideologies up against each other and forcing them to battle it out until one of them's destroyed and dead and the other one overcomes and the other one rises to the top. That is what this is. This is a gender war. I know there's some people who try to say, oh, no, we're not in a gender war. We're not. No, we absolutely are in a gender war. Women are headstrong and at this point have gained the egotistical. They've gained that, that how should I say, the masculine traits. They've become extremely egotistical and they want to compete with men. They, they want to compete with men for the easy jobs. They don't want to compete with men for the hard jobs. Like you don't see women out there laying third rails for fucking trains or carrying around steel girders or you don't see women out there um, um, uh, in the power lines uh, setting up high tension lines with the possibility of electrocution. You don't see that. What I'm saying is they'll compete with you for the office jobs and they'll compete with you to hold the stop sign at the construction site. But they're not competing with you to mine coal. Like it, it, they were, In fact, I was looking up history. Women and children actually used to mine coal until we passed a law that says, no, you're no longer allowed to mine coal, which basically put men only in the mines, even though children had some level of... Oh, well, men, women and children had the ability to get into smaller spaces that, than men could. So ultimately, we actually passed a law that said, no, nah, you're not going to do that anymore. And those women, those children, they had to just figure out another way that they were going to make some money. But I don't want to digress. The point is, we've become a nation of rhetoric. Everything's rhetoric now. Everybody talks in rhetoric. Everybody talks with statistics that they don't fully understand. The article that was made by Elle magazine, I could have responded to that a long time ago, but I chose now to do it because so much has happened since then. It's amazing how short a month is and how many things happen in a month. But in that article, you basically had some liberal feminist something or rather come out and say that uh, she was disgusted and worried about the manosphere. And the reason why they're so worried is because they see that the manosphere is changing attitudes and changing conversations between men and women. That said, then you get to Kevin Samuels. Now, I appreciate Kevin Samuels for his entertainment value. I love listening to his show. In fact, he had one last night called Galentine's Day, which I have to listen to in full. So usually when I'm listening to people talk, I do it in the shower or I do it while I'm in traffic. Or I do it if I absolutely have nothing else to do. But the problem that I have with Kevin Samuels and his message is that Kevin Samuels is mangling red pill talking points. And by the way, I really don't believe in any of these pills. I think it's all stupid. I think what it is is you have a bunch of men who can't control women and they're frustrated behind it. Um, Kevin Samuels, to me, is like an air traffic controller who is giving out directions to airplanes that have already crashed. The planes being the women. 
If you're giving out directions and you're giving out all this instruction and you're giving out all this quote unquote healing to women who are like past their thirties or in their forties and everything, then we don't really need you. It's like, again, it's like an air traffic controller. This is my quote. So I have to say quote because in the manosphere, nobody respects uh, copyright and all that. But as far as I'm concerned, I, as a pilot, I came up with this myself. I said, I believe Kevin Samuels reminds me of an air traffic controller who's giving out instructions to airplanes that have already crashed. At that point, they're on the ground. They've crashed. They ain't going nowhere. What's the point of giving them any instructions at all? What I don't think Kevin understands or what he's not willing to admit is that women have freedom. These women have either been sold a bag of lies or whatever it is. They've been told that they are free to do whatever they want. Unfortunately, freedom comes with huge consequences. In sociology, they teach you that women are choosing the career track over the mommy track, which means that they are waiting longer in life to get married, waiting longer in life to have children, and they've chosen careers and money over men. Now, men have always done this specifically because the gender roles said that women would be at home with the children and the household, that the burden of childbirth was on women, and that the man's job was to get out there and bring home the bacon. That When I was in the 80s growing up, that's what they called it. They said bringing home the bacon. Too many men nowadays don't bring home the bacon. Too many men nowadays have been basically feminized and demasculinated, however you want to call it. And they've basically been trained to believe that they shouldn't be in competition with each other. I absolutely believe in competition, but nowadays you see competition being taken out of everything. It's taken out of our schools. Um, the classic example is that if you have a bunch of kids playing, everybody gets a fucking trophy. That's the biggest bullshit ever. Now, if you want to give everybody some little stupid trophy, or if you want to take everybody for ice cream, that's cool. But the people who perform the best are supposed to win, and they're supposed to get more. That's one of the reasons why the liberal feminists hated Trump so much. It's because all he ever talked about was winning and dominating and this, that, and other. Now, basically, Trump was a fake alpha male. He allowed these Democrats to gang up on him and launch a, a, a basically a coup against his presidency, and then they pushed him out of power, and he couldn't do anything to stop it. Now, that said, why am I digressing? Well, as far as I'm concerned, Kevin needs to understand that these women are free. They can do whatever they want. There's nothing stopping them from doing what they want, including the traditional gender roles. And as long as these women continue to focus on money, and continue to compete with men for the wallet and who's the you know making the money that's what they're going to continue to do simply because they're able to do it one of the best things about the quarantine and the pandemic is that the pandemic showed you just where women really were at because they got sent home from all those office jobs employers said nah we don't need you that much you can stay home and when they were home they were forced back into the household back into the household with their man, if they had one, back into the household with their children. The schools were closed. The schools took all those loud, crazy-ass kids. Uh, yeah, guess what? You're staying home because you can't be in the building. And who's going to be at home with you? Mommy, daddy, if you have a daddy, grandma. So the pandemic, and this is, again, this is why I appreciate nature. I believe in entropy. Everything gets torn down. Everything goes to zero. People don't want to believe it, but I absolutely believe it. The pandemic showed you just how weak you really are. During the pandemic, I have to say, I didn't lose a dime. I made money hand over fist, year over year, from, what was it, 2020 onwards till now. Didn't lose a dime. I thank God for that. But the bottom line is it showed all of you just where your weaknesses were. It showed all of you just where the weaknesses in the system are. And it showed women their relationship with men and the system. It showed them that at the drop of a hat, 
that this corporate structure could cut them off and send them home and say, guess what? We don't need you no more. Go home, be with your wife, your, your kids and your husband. And my question is, did they learn from that? Chances are they probably didn't. So now I get back to Kevin Samuels from digressing. The reality is a lot of people are mad at Kevin Samuels in the uh, space Mostly, it's jealousy. No matter how you slice it, it's jealousy. Jealousy being the proper term in the uh, community, the term that's being used is, oh, y'all hating on him, hating on him, right? It makes me think back to that joke that somebody made about um, a man and a woman are in bed having sex. If the man has an orgasm, then the woman should have had an orgasm too. What's your excuse for not having an orgasm? We both had sex for the same amount of time. What's your excuse for not having an orgasm? If I had mine, you should have been able to get yours. Now, relating that to this situation, as far as I've can, you know, as far as I've seen, because I'm I'm not really a manosphere dude, and I don't believe in all these stupid pills. You know, what I see is a bunch of men who are frustrated that they can't control women, and they don't understand why. They too have been sold a a, a false bag of goods, and um, what I see is a bunch of dudes who can't understand. I was sitting on the same panels that Kevin Samuels is sitting on. If we were on those panels for the same amount of time. How is it that he's blown up so big and I haven't? That's what I see. Now, some people could always contest that. It doesn't really matter if you contest it or not because the simple fact is he is on a trajectory. I'm on my own trajectory because I have a big channel too. I have lots of views. I have lots of subs. But see, he blew past all of them so quickly that they're just left dumbfounded as to how did he do it. But when you really think about it, it's easy to understand how he did it. First of all, he controlled his image. He's wearing suits on all of these uh, these uh, talks that he's having. He's got a whole background. He's got a Pavlovian response to the music that he uses. He tells people, get my likes up. Everybody just does it. So no, it's easy for me to understand it. If you If you look at it from a psychological point of view, It's easy for me to understand that. But the other thing about cleaning up your image, he's not calling women bitches and hoes constantly. He's not using the N-word constantly. He's basically not talking ghetto. And there are a lot of people who probably resent him for that because, you know, if you move too far from the hood, then everybody wants to say you're a turncoat and you're a sellout. But the reality is, if you simultaneously want to talk about money and money accumulation and doing better in society, um, you pretty much have to go in the exact direction that the corporate money goes. And if they demand out of you that you present a certain image, you have to do it. And that's one of the things that these dudes just don't understand. Now, I have noticed that there's a lot of these new dudes... Chaotic Truth, I like going on his channel. Chaotic Truth comes on. He's got a nice background. He's got a nice suit on. There's uh, Bernard Riley, I believe his name is, comes on. He's got a nice background. He's got a nice suit on. He's talking. um, They try to keep the curse words out of the language as much as possible. Lead Attorney is another one. But obviously, he's a professional attorney, so he has to. More and more of these black men are controlling their image so that they can have a conversation like this and so that they can't get flagged down on YouTube. Which is why what I don't understand about these Manosphere dudes is how ignorant or how unlearned are you that you don't see that or don't understand that. And for for you to be calling somebody a sellout because they're doing things the right way, I just find that hilarious. Kevin had Nicki Minaj on his platform. He didn't attack her the same way he would attack any regular woman because the simple rule is you do not punch down or you do not punch up depending upon the situation. Wherever you are, you have to know when to punch down and when to not punch down. You have to know when to punch up and when to not punch up. He hasn't made it yet. Kevin Samuels hasn't fully made it yet. So you can't punch up. If you're punching people who got more power than you, you're going to get you're going to get marginalized. You don't want that. Once you get to a certain point, 
it's easy to punch down, but even then you shouldn't punch down on certain people. Like, you know you can't attack the mentally retarded and you can't attack people who are physically uh, disabled and stuff. You know you can't do that. That's one of the biggest things they continuously criticize Trump on is how he made fun of that news reporter who, who had, like, uh, a physical illness. He's like, oh, I don't remember what I said. I can't remember. And he kept on making fun of the dude. And he was making his mannerisms. And the guy, the guy had muscular dystrophy. It's like you can't punch down on certain people. But like I said, you can't punch up on certain people. Some of these dudes just don't understand that. There was no way in hell... Kevin Samuels was going to go on Nicki Minaj's platform and attack her, nor should he have even considered doing that. I saw it in his face the second that she came out of her mouth with the uh, tell all of these dudes to suck a dick and to stop worrying about. I saw it in his face that he wanted to respond, but he knew damn well he couldn't. Have. It was it was almost like a spider biting a fly and, and injecting paralyzing toxins. But guess what? There's wisdom in holding your tongue. There's a reason why I started this video out with, you know, showing me playing a couple of chess games. When I play chess, and a lot of people don't understand chess well enough to understand what playing chess looks like, there's only a couple of ways that you can win the game. Number one, you can either be so good that you checkmate the other guy. But let's say you're not that good at playing the game, and let's say you're playing on a clock. The other major way that you can win a chess game is you can run the other guy's clock out. You can make moves that cause the other person to have to think so much that they run out of time. And if they run out of time, you win regardless how far down you were. The reality is a lot of these dudes don't play chess, don't understand chess, don't understand strategy, don't understand strategizing. And that's the reason why they think it's so easy to just attack somebody who's on a higher level than them because they think that they're playing out in the streets. This is Hollywood. This is not the streets. Most of you do not understand either. That's why you see so many dudes getting gunned down every day. They don't understand the streets. They think, oh, yeah, I'm a Macosphere. I can say whatever I want and I can do whatever I want. I'll go to these women. I'll fuck on. Yeah, guess what? Most of these dudes don't make it. You can tell, what do they say? Um, uh, what does they say? Always beware of an old man in a game where young men die young. I believe that's the quote. And they're like, there's no, there's no such thing as a fool who's an old man. If you're an old man, you're not a fool. You can't be a fool because you made it and they didn't. So a lot of these dudes just don't understand that. But again, I'm not trying to digress. And I'm still talking about this... Kevin Samuels situation because I saw when I woke up this morning I saw his video with Future I'm pretty sure at this point it's probably over 800,000 views because it went from zero to like 625,000 within a very short period of time regardless how you may feel about Nicki Minaj I think she's trash honestly and regardless how you feel about Future and you calling him pookie and this that and other regardless how you feel about these people these people are powerful within this Hollywood industry that's the bottom line and if you want to work your way up a ladder and you want to have the fame and fortune and this, that, and other, you're just going to have to play the game. But a lot of you don't understand the Game of Thrones. You watch that shit on HBO, but you still don't fucking understand the Game of Thrones. You don't understand it. The Game of Thrones is all about strategy up until at least that eighth, uh, that eighth season, which was garbage. It was poorly written. But the Game of Thrones isn't just there to entertain you. It's supposed to teach you. You have to be strategic with how you go about dealing with people. If you want to break in to celebrity culture and you want to break in to where the celebrity, if you want to sit next to them on the plane or you want to be where they are and you want the kind of money they got and you want the chances, like all of these dudes shooting and killing each other because, oh yeah, he made it as a rapper and he didn't pull me up. You've heard the story so many times, like these jealous dudes who all of them are cutting mixtapes, because I, I see this shit all the time. All these dudes are cutting mixtapes and trying to sell their albums. Nobody wants to hear that shit. But then all of a sudden, one of them comes up with a beat or a sound that everybody wants to hear. And then all of a sudden, they escalate into the sky. And you're still on the ground. And now you're angry. 
and you're jealous and you mad at him. Oh, oh, he stole my beats. Oh, he stole my sound. Oh, he stole. The reality is, you know, y'all were on the panel for the same amount of time. How did he make it and you didn't? How did he get his orgasm and you didn't get yours? And that, that's basically all I got to say. I'm like, you guys got to be more strategic with what you're doing. And you have, you have to think. You have to be strategic. You can't attack every time. You can't attack first all the time. Sometimes you got to be on the defense. A lot of dudes don't understand that. And that's all I really had to say about this situation. It's going to keep coming up because Kevin Samuels isn't done with Nicki Minaj and he's not done with Future. He's been on Future. Everybody else is going to want him on their channel too. Everybody else is going to want him on their music video. But you guys need to learn. And I understand a lot of dudes got this, this mentality from the hood and they can't get it out of their mind because they've been indoctrinated by it. You have to learn. And if you don't learn, then you can forget it. And that's the bottom line. And as for, you know, he's stealing my beats, certain things can't be copyrighted. The law doesn't allow for it. That's some bullshit.